the Lord of Lords, if you may, please just stretch your hands in the air and uh, just like it was on the day of Pentecost, the Spirit of God came, there was a shaking and there was a wind and upon them there seemed to be like tongues of fire, fire to those who were waiting in the upper room to be filled with power to become witnesses, ambassadors of the faith and the miracles and signs and wonders that God himself was about to do. This morning, Lord, we humble ourselves before you, Lord, and we ask that you speak to us. We humble ourselves this Sunday morning and we ask and we say, touch me, Lord. Fire me up, Lord. More fire. New wine. Yes, God, new anointing. This day I pray and I commit my soul and my life to you. Father, we are gathered here at New Life Bible Church. Many more are following us online and many are on KC2. We all need a touch of heaven. Touch of heaven. Touch of heaven. Father, we have heard great speeches. We have heard great communications. But Lord, all we want to hear today, we want to hear from you. We want to hear from you. Speak to us this day. And Father, even as I open my mouth, Declare your word, share your word, anoint me for the preaching of your word. 
God, I pray for everyone who is listening right now. Please open their hearts. Yes, prepare their hearts right now that we may all partake on what you have for us. God, we are ready. Speak now. The servants are listening. In Jesus' name we prayed. Amen. Have your seats. My name is Fred Isaac Katagwa. I am one of the senior pastors here at New Life Bible Church. On behalf of the church leadership and my own behalf, I want to welcome you all to the house of God. Welcome to New Life Bible Church. Yes. I also want to welcome those of you who are following us online on YouTube. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for being there. May God bless you, may God bless you. We thank you for joining us. Many of you on KC2, thank you so much for coming to New Life. And uh, I want to welcome you and say, welcome, welcome. For many of you who are part of this family, since they have started, I hope you've been following. The first Sunday on the second I shared with us about positioning ourselves for breakthrough. Positioning, positioning ourselves for a miracle. For a miracle. And last Sunday, on the 9th, the servant of God examined the miracle of feeding the 5,000. People actually found out they were not just 5,000 because it was only the men who were counted, the women and the children were not. So we examined that text. And today, by the grace of God, I want to bring a message of entitled Believe God for a Miracle. Believe in God for miracles. Yes. But let me begin from where we started. Where we stopped action. And if you are believing God for a miracle, this is what you're going to need to do. You are going to learn to place it in the hands of Jesus. Do you remember that statement? Place it in the hands of Jesus. You remember the story of feeding the 5,000? The time was not favorable. The location was not the best. The options were to give them something to eat. That was Jesus. And the disciples said, let them get out of here. But thank God the option of Jesus stood. It was give them something to eat. And I remember the strategy was, sit them down. Saints, listen, cool down. Sit down. Settle. If you don't cool down, God will cool you down. So just cool down. Okay? Let the storm cool or you'll be cooled down. I hope we are following and let me continue one more step and say, let the matters be placed in the hands of Jesus. A young boy had how many loaves? Five and two fish. That was too little, but he pressed it all in the hands of Jesus. And I love Jesus because when it was pressed in the life, in the hands of Jesus, Jesus blessed it. In other words, he celebrated it. And then what happened? He looked to the heavens and pressed it in the hands of God. And when it got in the hands of God, what happened? It was transformed. Transformation happened. And then from the hands of Jesus, it was given to the disciples. And in the hands of the disciples, it was multiplied. 
Are you following me? And then from the hands of the disciples, the, the little things that were there, the inferior things were pressed in the hands of the eater, in the hands of the hungry people, and they were satisfied. Can I go on? Whatever that you have, however small it is, press it in the hands of Jesus. You say these things are very hard, Pastor. You have never tried this. It is too much. How can it happen? Yes, press it in the hands of Jesus. That I'm sick and the doctor has said, let them say whatever they say. When the issue gets in the hands of Jesus, this is what happens. He's a miracle worker. May I say to all of us who are following us today, that Jesus we serve is a specialist in impossibilities. If Jesus was to have a shop downtown in Kichuchiro or around downtown in Nyarujenje there, he would have a big shop written on the master of impossibilities. Because there is nothing can, that can stand his way that he can shake. That's why, saints, by the grace of God today, I want to ask us to, uh, 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 to, to believe God for miracles. And in my message, I want to inspire you. I want to inspire you before you expire. I want to inspire you because before you are discouraged. I want to inspire you to believe God for miracles this year. This year, this year. What is a miracle? A miracle is a divine work of God that transcends human understanding, that inspires wonders, okay? That displays goodness, the goodness of God, and causes people like you and me to recognize that God is actively working. That's what miracles do. They inspire you. What are miracles? There are many, many definitions you can even form yours today. A miracle is an extraordinary event that goes against the nature. An extraordinary event that cannot be explained by science. That Christians believe that it is by God and God alone. Saints, you want a miracle? Press everything in the hands of God. Time, treasure, location, whatever you have that seem not to be like you want more out of it and you want to see something happening, press it in the hands of Jesus. Yes or yes? Let me press some more. Today, I want to talk about two personalities, and one of them is Abraham. And when I talk about Abraham, I want to begin from the moment of dreaming to the time of a decision made, to the delays and the difficulties, but deliverance was on the way. I also want to talk about a man by the name of Simon Peter, and with him, I want to talk about three things. Struggle, 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 struggle. Number two, surrender, surrender, surrender. And number three, I want to talk about his moment of success, the fishing trip to remember. And at the end of it all, I want you to believe for miracles. Believe in the God who, cause, who causes things that are dead to be alive again. What can God do? God gives new life to something that is dead. What will God do? God creates something out of nothing. You see, the Bible reveals several different forms of miracles. Go in the Bible, in the very beginning, the world was formless. There was nothing. And God said, let there be, and there was. Is he not a God of miracles? The Bible says the one time Joshua had to command the sun to stand still. Was that not a miracle? 
You remember the marching, walking through the Dead Sea. Was, none, was that not a miracle? When you go through the whole Bible, the Bible is a miracle book because God is a miracle worker. I want you to get ready and be positioned to receive from the Lord God himself. Let me go to the book of Romans. Romans 417, 417, 417. Read with me. I'm reading according to NIV. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God and in whom he believed. The God who gives life to the dead and calls things into being that were known. Verse 18, against all hope, Abraham hoped, believed, and so became. <laughs> I love the language there. Hoped, believed, and became the father of many nations. Just as it had been said to him, so shall your offsprings be. Verse 19, without weakening in his faith. Without weakening in his statements, he faced the fact that his body was as good as what? Dead. Since he was about a hundred years old, and Sarah's womb was also dead, yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise that was straightened in faith and gave glory to to God. Verse 21, being persuaded, hallelujah, 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 being persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. I can go on and on, but in this text, in this scripture, is when God told Abraham that I have made you a father of many nations. This happened because Abraham Believed in God who brings dead things to life. This happened because Abraham, against all hope, he hoped in the Lord and believed God for great and mighty things. Now, how God prepares you for a miracle? How does God prepare you and me for a miracle? How does God do that? Abraham's life is a great example. That's why I chose to take you the book of, of, of Genesis and we look at Abraham and then go to the New Testament and see another life. Hopefully, you'll be prepared for a miracle in your life. Abraham's life had like six phases of faith that I, I may not go through, but I'll give you a few. Phase number one was the dreaming phase. Dreaming dreaming, by giving him a dream and a vision, it was a preparation of what God was about to do. Chapter 12, verse 1 to 3, the Lord said to Abraham, leave your country, your relatives, your father's family, and go to the land I will show you. And I'll make you into a great nation. I'll bless you and make you famous. You'll be a great blessing. I'll bless those who bless you. I'll curse those who curse you. And all the families of the earth will be blessed through you. Dreaming time. Dreaming time. Seeing big things and believing God for big things. When God speaks, grasp it and believe it. Friends, the Bible says without a vision, people perish. Without a dream, people don't know where they are going. Let me tell you, there is power in dreaming. There's power in dreaming. But also after this moment, God prepares us by allowing us, giving us the ability to make the right decision. Verse 4, Abraham, chapter, uh, Genesis chapter 12, verse 4, 12, 4. So Abraham departed as the Lord had instructed. That is Decision. He made a decision. And Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years when he left. He made a decision to obey. He made a decision to follow. 
But when we make decisions, there are moments of delays, right? There was a delay in the fulfillment of this promise. Chapter 15, Genesis 15. Sometime later, the Lord spoke to Abraham in a vision and said, do not be afraid. Listen, there could have been a delay, but do not be afraid. Abraham, I'll protect you and I will reward you. Your reward will be great. And Abraham replied, oh, sovereign Lord, what good are all the blessings when I don't even have a son? Since you've given me no ch children, a years of Damascus, a servant of my household, will inherit my wealth. You have given me no descendant of my own. So one of my servant will be my heir. Then the Lord said, no, 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 no. I will do a miracle. I would, yes, yes, your body is as good as dead, but I will do a miracle. They are meant, things might have delayed, but the delay of God is not a denial. It's not a delay. Now, when we go through moments of delay, three things happen. Write them down. You need them. Number one, Doubt sets in. Right? Despair comes your way. And then something else that comes is what I call the detour. The detour. You, you look for other ways. Instead of Isaac, you look for an Ishmael. You find a way to find yourself a husband. You preach, you convert and marry. You find a way. You find a way of getting yourself something. Detours in life are so many. Many have detoured. You are about to detour. But before you detour, listen. Believe God for a miracle. Believe God for a miracle. In our church where I grew up, there was, a, there, was a, there was a man who came and told us, God has promised him a car. It's going to be a good car. But he waited for the car and the car was not coming. So in his own means, he got himself a little Toyota that was always dying and spare parts were flying. Whenever he starts, smoke was everywhere. And he said, this is my Ishmael. He had his Ishmael for a long time, and Ishmael caused him trouble. He would always come late, and when he would say, brother, what's going on? You are supposed to be the service. Oh, my Ishmael delayed me. My Ishmael troubled me. One day, he was tired of his Ishmael because his Ishmael almost caused him an accident to lose his life. So he packed his Ishmael and came to church on Futubishu. You know the foot? You come footing, futubishu. <laughs> so he came because he was tired of Ishmael. He was tired of making things his way. Some of you are troubled because you did too a day. And you put a thorn, and that thorn is harder. You put a thorn in your life and it is too much. Listen, do not detour. The promises of God are yes. And amen to those who believe. Can I say something? No matter what God has promised, all his promises will come to pass at the appointed time. The Bible says at the appointed time, Jesus came. At the appointed time, he makes everything beautiful. Don't quicken your miracle. Please let it cook. Let it get ready. Let it come your way. Do not celebrate half-baked miracles because he will bring it to pass. Now listen, after the delay came the phase of difficulties. Chapter 17, verse 1, Genesis. When Abraham was, seven, was 99 years old, the man was still waiting. No wonder, against all hope, he hoped. He never weakened in his faith. He kept pushing. He never gave up. He never gave up. Bible says, the Lord appeared to him and I said, I am El Shaddai. God Almighty, serve me faithfully and live a brimless life. 
I'll make a covenant with you and by which I'll guarantee to give you countless children. I'll guarantee. Then God got him and took him out and he showed him all the stars and told him, so will your descendants be. Imagine the stars. If you cannot imagine the stars, just imagine these lights. Look at these lights. So shall your children be. How many would love to have as many as these children? Oh, none to you. Okay, how many would love to have as many as these cows? That's okay. How about how many would I want to have as many as these accounts? Oh, that's awesome. Listen, God will give you a vision. And when he gives you a vision, he will require you to make a decision. When you make a decision, delay might come. But even when delay comes and difficulties come, listen, do not detour because the God we serve is a God who answers. You are on difficulties. Before I, don't, before I tell you about the dead end, dead end, it is those moments when it is as if you have hit the rock. You have borrowed from everyone and paid back the one you borrowed and you borrowed again and you are now, you are running away. You see someone waving to you and you think they want their money. Because you've been borrowing everywhere, but that's not a good habit. If you can uh, may God grant you the grace. <laughs> because you, you have reached a dead end. A time came. And for Abraham, it was as if it was a dead end. Even the little boy, God had given him. God told him, now go sacrifice the boy. And as they were on their way, imagine they are moving from Niboi and they are in Kichichiro. They are going to the mountain of the Lord. They are there at Rebero. As they reach Zuru Park, the boy asks, Dad, yes, we are here to sacrifice. But where is the lamb? And you know how we know all the Christian language? Man is ironyera. <laughs> the Lord who provides. The son is asking, Dad, what is going on? Difficulties, delays, but thank God for deliverance. Thank God for deliverance. The Bible says, as they were still waiting, the Lord himself provided a lamb. A lamb in the thick, in the forest, the Lord provided you hear the name Jehovah Jireh? That's where it comes from. The Lord provides. The scriptures say, the Lord himself will provide. Listen, saints, in 2.22, the Lord himself will provide. Will provide. Will provide. Will provide. But, but listen, this is the kind of faith that God rewards how did Abraham overcome the temptation of giving up? Number one, he believed in God. Believe in God. Believe in God. Number two, he hoped. He based his hope in scriptures. He read scriptures. Listen, friends. Faith comes by hearing and the hearing of God's word. It is not the hearing of the stories. Mm-mm. It is not the stories. The stories have been told, but I know the story that will encourage you. I know the writing that will relocate you. I know the story that will give you courage, that will prepare you for the new year. It is the word of God. It is the word of God that makes you a man and a woman of God. It is the word of God that deposits life where there is death. It is the word of God that says yes when they've said no. It is the word of God that is unchanging in a changing world, but still it changes lives. It is the word of God by which we say it is written. It is written, man shall not live on, the, on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Grab your Bible, please, and read your Bibles, because in your Bible, you will find life, and your faith will increase. Faith is facing the fact, but still, you believe. You face the fact that your body is as good as dead. And your wife has advanced in years. But still say, God will do a miracle. 
you face the fact that we don't have any money in our account. It is the 16th and December treated us differently. We don't have any coin, but still we're not going to borrow for food. The Lord himself will do a miracle. You have faith and believe God to provide for you. God provides. Faith thanks God in advance. In advance. You remember I told you that if I were to give you a check right now and I say, my friend, this check will pay the tuition of all the children you give birth to. And this other check, it will be for your mortgage. Grab them. It will help you. When do you thank God? At the receiving of the check or at the maturity date? When? As soon as I receive the check, my friend, I hug you and I say, to hell with COVID, thank you for this check. <laughs> he just asked them and said, thank you for the check at that day. And here is the check. And the check is, faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things not seen. There is evidence. There is a guarantee that the God calls things that are dead as though they are alive. Saying, Pastor, no, 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 no. It is a gone case. It is not a gone case until he says so. Lazarus is ticking. No, no, no. Where have you buried him? Lazarus, come out. Those are the miracles I'm talking about, brothers and sisters. Those are the miracles I want you to get to see and to understand. Hmm. Where should I begin? Anyway. I'll tell you more about Abraham some other day. I want to go to my other personality in the remaining 13 minutes. By the grace of God, I hope you will walk with me. Now, in Luke chapter 5, we find a story. But before you go there, you get there, let, me, let us do some, some revision. Revision here. Believe in God for miracles. What do you do? Pray sit in the hands of God. Yes? Number two, what do you do? Whatever he tells you, do it. Remember John chapter two, changing water into wine, and Mary says, uh, you people, whatever that boy of man tells you, just do it. Just do it. Position yourself for the miracles of God. I am here to let you know that our God is a miracle worker. Our God has never failed anyone. So whatever he says, do it. And finally, at thy word, I will. Come with me to Luke chapter 5. Let me go quickly to verse 5. And uh, before I get to that, let me say, the verses from verse 1, chapter 5, Luke, verse 1 to, to 5, those verses tell us that Jesus was by the sea of Gennesaret. And Jesus was there to preach. And as he was about to preach, he needed a pulpit. He needed a place where he would stand and preach to so many. But this is very real. So he stood in a boat that belonged to Simon Peter. There were two boats. And the fishermen had left their boats they were washing their nets because they had caught nothing. They were calling it a day. After preaching and preaching, I believe there was an amen. Preach it, Jesus. They preached and he preached and preached. And then he said, Simon Peter, where are you? Launch out into much water for a catch. And Simon said, Master, mm -mm, mm -mm, we have toiled. Man, we toiled. We toiled the whole night and caught nothing. It was a night of struggle. 222 is not that year. 221 was a year of struggle. 220 was a year of struggle. Maybe 219 was a year of struggle. They worked hard. They worked hard and caught nothing. Not even Mukene. 
Not even in Dagara. Not even a small fish. That is what the Greek, uh, the, 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 the writer mean when they say they caught nothing. Meaning, not even one. They had called it a day. But Jesus came and he told them, try again. Try again. Do you want a miracle? I am here today. I want to say, try again. Try again. And you're saying, Pastor, really? I proposed six months and she said, no. Should I try again? Yes. Try again. Try again. Launch in your manifesto this time. And believe God for a miracle of yes. Because, let me tell you, what will it cost you to try again? Try again is a principle that will prepare you for your miracle. Try again. Try again. Now, they had caught nothing. Their failure had nothing to do with their strategy. Their failure had nothing to do with their style. Their failure had nothing to do with the location this time. Their failure had something to do with their faith. Their failure came about because God wanted to teach them a deep lesson. And here is the lesson. Without him, we can do nothing. Without Jesus in your boat, not even Mukene. Without Jesus in your life, you will struggle. You will have it all only to be taken by others. Without Jesus in your boat, you will have everything only to be worried to death because you are worried they will take away what you have because the Prince of Peace is not in your life. This day, by the grace of God, I want to call upon all those who have never given their life to Jesus. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the true solution for whatever you're asking yourself. Come to Jesus. When he's in your life, you will try again. You try again. You try again. Friends, it was a night of struggle. Why did they fail? It had nothing to I told you. I hope you understand. But listen, here is what I want you to remember when you face an opportunity to serve God after many hours of failure. Our failure and, our, and all our success are entirely resting on where Jesus stands in the picture. Where is Jesus in your picture? Why do you want to do what you do? Let me tell you. Many people want to do things for their own glory, for their own fame. It is not about fame. It is about the family of God. It's about the glory of God. The reason why your miracle has been waiting and waiting. God knows that when I give you a miracle, you may go away from church. How I many of you, if God gave you three farms right now, we would see you four Sundays in a month? You had a farm in Karangas, another farm near Gashora Lake, another farm around here uh, as you go to Kayonza. How many of you wouldn't be seeing your cows every weekend? God is our way and God knows. But let me tell you, it's okay, by the way, about farms. You can have them as long as you go in the morning. And by three, you come back and shower and dress up. By five, you come to church. You come to church. That is okay. That is okay. It is okay. I hear some pastors who say, Baba Niminsi, they go to gym on Sunday. What's wrong with it? As long as you go gym, you go everywhere and then prepare and come to the house of God. I propose that this year you will attend church 52 Sundays in a year. We have a curriculum. We have so many to teach. For the first whole month, we are talking about miracles. We have not talked about other disciplines yet. And are you coming late or you won't come? Anyway, a night of struggle, a night of struggle. Ah, uh, a night of struggle. Struggle. How many here have ever struggled? Put up your hand if you have ever struggled. If you have never struggled, you are lying. Repent after this sermon. Because all of us have ever struggled. Some of you, your pillow is wet because the night was a night of struggle. You thought about life. You thought about the future. You think about your children. You think about your business. And you are crying the whole night. It's a night of struggle. But thank God, joy comes in the morning. The morning of surrender. The 
morning of surrender. I pray by the grace of God, all of us gathered here, we reach a point when we echo the same words of Peter that at thy word I will. That is surrender. At thy word, at thy command, I will surrender your life to Jesus. Surrender your children to Jesus. Surrender your finances to him. Surrender your future to him because you'll be sure and secure for sure in the hands of God. When you surrender it to him, it will be well with you. Surrender, surrender, surrender. I can imagine Simon Peter and his partners were ready to call it a day. They had fished the whole night and had caught nothing. Not even a single little fish. They were tired, frustrated, discouraged. Think of any negative statement added on. They were tired, frustrated, just to be told, try again. Which, in the same lake, this time, they are being told by not a professional fisherman, but by a carpenter. A son of a carpenter is teaching them how to fish. Master, you don't know. We have struggled. We have worked hard. And we know what we are doing. We know science. Thank you for your science. But there is a point where faith and science, they have to meet and surrender to the God of heaven. I'm telling you, there are many scientists who have said, you know what? I surrender. There are many businessmen who have tried every strategy. And now they are trying tithing. Because every other strategy has failed them. You know, giving away money is not the normal way of doing business. But keeping and keeping and keeping and spending less is the business way. But let me tell you, when you try God's way, him first. Yourself second, and whatever you have for his glory is the best way to do business. Now you are saying, Pastor, wait, you don't know business. Pastor, I know even the little one you started failed. Yes, right now I don't speak based on my knowledge, but I speak under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, under the working of God. Because when God says yes, nobody can say no. When God says yes, things are double, 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 double. That is the kind of God we serve. Surrender. What made a difference? What made a difference between a night of struggle and a morning of surrender? What was the difference? The difference was total obedience. Obedience cooled the day. Solved everything. When you obey, I am telling you, when you obey, you eat the good of the land. But when you don't, finish the story, known to me. Night of struggle, finally, a morning, a, 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 a tomorrow of success, a tomorrow of satisfaction. Because obedience ruled the day, they witnessed an immediate reward of a vast catch of fish. Beyond that, the miracle brought all the other fishermen on their knees. But I've got, yeah, Baba, way, jenda, yes, way, wara, mama, ye, ahu, jeze, ho, se, bagu, kurida, ingo, fero, jenda, yes, way, wara, mama, ye, le, kambab, gire, yes, ya, tanji, ya, gukora, when Jesus is in your boat and you go fishing, you don't fish like everyone else. You fish by faith. When Jesus is in your boat and you start to speak, you don't speak not agenda, but you say, he will make a way. He will make a way. He will make a way. And look at the success. The Bible says that day when they fished, they caught a lot of fish, a lot, and their boat started started to sink. 
That's a lot of cash, my friend. That's a lot of cash until your account is sinking. That's a lot of money. And they, they caught a lot of fish. What did they do? Listen to this point, my friend. They called their friends. Come. Come. How about Kwiga? Come. How about Dusengana? Come. Paturan, you come. Fishermen, come. Sons of Zebedee, come. We have a lot of fish. We need to put in your boat too. If you want to expect a miracle this year, learn to share. Learn to share what God has given you. Some of you have this business. I don't know where you got it. Everyone is minding his business. Let me tell you, when God blesses you, <laughs> when God blesses you, you need to learn to be a blessing. We have so many dead seas at church simply because you are not flowing. You are not flowing. Money is stuck in your hands. Because money is stuck in your hands, you can't get more money. Miracles are stuck in your hands. You can't get more miracles. Let me tell you, learn to be a blessing. Learn to be a blessing. Listen, church, learn to partner with others. People who are successful, they don't walk alone. If you want to walk fast, run. But you want to go far, go with others. Yes. All these people who are inventing things, they work together as a the team. They bring their discoveries and bring their discoveries. But as for you, your business is for you alone in your pocket. You don't share any idea. You think they will steal it. Let me tell you. Let them take. God will give you another one. I want to say this. In conclusion, when the Lord told Peter to let down his net, he didn't want to do so. Because he had tried. You don't want to do what I'm telling you. You are saying, Pastor, you don't know. Last year taught me a lesson. Thank you for the lesson. I have another lesson this day. God is still on the throne. God still heals. Yes, you are saying, Pastor, you don't know. My lungs are wider. Let them be wider. I know someone who can do a miracle, who can do an operation, who can give you another moment. To live again. Listen, church. Now is the time for your salvation. Now is the time for your celebration. Today, my, 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 my idea is to inspire you to believe God for big things. I want you to be, I want to tickle you. I, I, I want to ask you today, let every man be a liar. But let God be God. Let God be God. Yes, there might be a moment of dreaming, but as you are dreaming, step out in decision. Yes, as you decide, there could be delays, there could be difficulties, there could be detours. Don't worry. Nevertheless, at his word, launch out for a catch. Launch out for a catch. If you are following me, just wave, wave to me like this. Wave to me, wave to me, wave to me, wave to me. Tell your neighbor for me. Try again. Try again. Tell him, don't detour. Don't, I hope you, 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 you understand. Don't detour on life. Because if you detour, you disappoint yourself and your descendants. You'll be known in history as someone who quits. And winners never quit. Because winners, they persist. They push on. And they say, nevertheless, nevertheless, at thy word, I will. Give God praise if you are with me. And if you are giving praise, let's sing together. Let's sing, let's sing, let's sing to him. For he alone is worthy, is worthy, is worthy. Lord, we love you and give you praise. For you are God who is a miracle worker. We love you.